Hi folks, uh, this is Jim. Uh, if you see by the title of, the, of this video, this is kind of like a, a story about the best actor I have ever seen on stage. That's a, a live stage. Now I've seen, personally, I've seen Al Pacino on several times on stage. I've seen Meryl Streep a couple of times. I've seen Rao Julia, I think only once. No, I've seen him twice, too. I saw him in Taming of the Shrew uh, with Meryl Streep. This is in the 70s, in the Shakespeare in the Park. And I saw him with Richard Dreyfuss in uh, another Shakespeare play, Othello. No, yes, was it Othello? Yeah, I think it was, it was Othello. And that was also Shakespeare in the Park in the 70s when they were young men. Raul Julia, unfortunately, is no longer with us, but he was a very good actor. Was, I've seen Sam Watterson on stage. And who else? I think I've seen Stacy Keach, but I didn't know it was Stacy Keach at the time. I've seen other people too. I know they're fairly prominent, but I can't. Uh, I can't. John Cassell, he's no longer with us either, but he was fairly important when I saw him. Lenny Baker, probably people don't know who he was, but he was a very good stage actor. Uh, that fellow died of AIDS in the 80s, I believe. I didn't know that at the time. I wonder what. I was just wondering whatever happened to him. I thought he would be, you know very famous when I saw him in New York, but uh, he kind of like disappeared. I wonder why. It turned out he died of AIDS. I found that out later on. And uh, let's see, I've seen Bill Hickey. He once was nominated for Academy Award and Princey's Honor. Anyway, the reason I'm giving all, uh, name dropping all these names is, oh, Geraldine Fischel, not only did I see her on stage, but I would, you know, became quite friendly with her. Uh, I was uh, I worked in the theater where she was uh, put in on a show in New York. The reason I'm dropping all these names is I've seen all these very prominent actors, very famous actors on stage. But oddly enough, the best actor I have ever seen by far, I can't even remember his name, by the way. I was in a play with him at, at the time, too. The best actor I've ever seen by far is... A relatively unknown amateur actor in La Havre, California, and I don't know if he—he's still—he's probably in his forties now. Uh, He's—he's—he. Uh, he, the last I heard, he was making his living uh, in a goofy costume in Disneyland, and I just think it's so ironic. The best actor I've seen all these top-notch actors, but the best of all time I've ever seen, me personally, that I consider to be the best, was his day job was working in a, in a goofy costume. Uh, I think it was goofy. Maybe it was Pluto, but I'm pretty sure it was goofy. And so I was thinking, hiding all that talent in a goofy costume. And so I thought, you know, maybe people would be interested to know that, or in, in my opinion, just because you're famous and renowned on stage doesn't mean that you're the best actor who ever lived. And this reminded me of a, I believe, I can't remember the name of it, but it, there was a short story, I think, written by, I never read it, but I heard about it. There was a short story written by Kurt Vonnegut. I read a lot of Kurt Vonnegut's books, but not this one, and some of his short stories. But in this one, I think, from what a friend of mine told me, it was a story about an amateur actor who was exactly five times better than Marlon Brando. And I thought it was ludicrous. Come on, you know, if you're that good. I mean, I thought, well, obviously it's fiction, you know, and it's just meant to be humorous. But then later on in life, as an older man, I was in a, a, an amateur production of Sweeney Todd. And I was on stage with this 
actor who was a replacement for another actor, uh, you know, because uh, they extended the show for a couple of more weeks and the, the guy playing Judge uh, Turpin didn't want to be continued. No, it wasn't Judge Turpin, excuse me, it wasn't him. It was uh, the Italian fellow in Sweeney Todd, Pirelli. The guy playing Pirelli didn't want to continue to be Pirelli. And so, I know I'm, I'm losing my frame here. I'm holding this by hand, by the way. I apologize for this uh, being on my laptop. I know this is not technically a, a very good way to, to do a, a video. Anyway, the guy playing uh, Pirelli in the, in the uh, show, the musical, Sweeney Todd, you know, wanted out. So he only agreed to do it for so long. And then when they extended the show, he, he wasn't willing to, you know, continue on. He wanted to leave when he originally agreed, agreed to leave. So they replaced him with this guy who we hadn't even acted with. Uh, we were wondering how he was going to do. And he came on, and I don't know, without any rehearsal with the rest of us, he just came on and was Pirelli, and he was just astonishingly good. I don't know if he'd ever played Pirelli before, but he was just, I mean, everybody, we had never seen him in rehearsal, so he had a whole stage full of actors watching him with their jaws dropped because he was so inventive and so talented and it would do things nobody else on the planet would ever think of doing with that part. And you could tell that the actors were really impressed with him because when, uh, uh, the, I want to say halftime, they don't have halftime in the theater. When intermission came and we, they were all in, you know, huddled in the uh, cramped uh, makeup and the, costume room uh, waiting to you know for in intermission to be over so they go back on stage all the other actors are very quiet none of them patted him on the back or said that was a great job and one or two might have said something but there was this overall silence and I could tell all those actors were jealous of him I wasn't jealous of him because I'm an old man and this is a relatively young man probably in his 30s then um, and uh, I suspect, I can't say this for sure, but I suspect he had never received any formal training, that he was self-taught. What trained him in acting was just going out there and auditioning for community theater. And the astonishing thing about him is that I've seen the big, I've been around the pros and I've seen them in New York. I've watched them on stage. I've worked in theaters in New York. Well, I worked in a theater in New York. I even tried to become a professional actor on my own and I felt miserably at it. So uh, don't take my advice on how to become a professional. I can tell you how to become a, an amateur actor, that I know about. But I failed miserably at becoming a professional. But I'd seen professionals over and over again, night after night. And I know that this guy was so much more fascinating to watch. I mean, I'd rather watch this guy perform on stage than Al Pacino. And it's just so ironic that, and I can't even remember the guy's name. I meant to, I, I, I used to be on Facebook and he was on my Facebook. Maybe he'll see this someday and say, hey, it was me, Jim. Uh, he'll know who, who I am uh, based on what I said. But it just astonished me that, and so I was, acting with this guy for two weeks and it astonished me that why is this guy an amateur no you know relatively unknown person how did he escape not being becoming famous it just amazed me so i just wanted to tell this story i don't know if it's worth it i have some opinions that would be very considered heresy now i studied at the american academy of dramatic arts in new york i studied at hb studio i studied at Lee Sasper Theater Arts Institute. I know I'm not enunciating now. Let me say that again. I studied acting at Lee Strasper Theater Arts Institute in New York. And 
I can't remember a doggone thing I learned. Oh, wait, I'm losing my... I can't remember a doggone thing I learned there. I remember waddling around pretending to be a penguin at the, the Strasburg Institute. But I think... And so, you know, they got these... Uh, you know, James Stacy coming out and trying to teach people how to be an actor online and Dustin Hoffman. And I'm thinking, what a waste of money. I'm sorry, I know I know people are going to hate me for saying this. But the guy I'm talking about, that guy was the best actor. I don't think he ever went to an acting school. I don't... He just did what he learned how to do just by auditioning for local community theater and picking it up as he went along. And I wasted so much money going to these acting schools when I was a young man that I wish I hadn't done that. I wish I would... You know what? I don't even think it's a good idea now I, I, to spend money to, to go to college. I know people are going to hate me for saying that. But what happens when you go to a college? Not, not just for acting, but for anything. You go to college, and the colleges now are so expensive that once you get out, you have this huge debt hanging over your head that might take 20 to 30 years to pay off. I mean, really? Is it really? You would be better going to trade school and learn how to be a plumber. And then once you get your plumbing skill, if you did want to be an actor, then go into community theater. Now, I don't know if you're going to get... Maybe that's the reason why this guy never became famous, because he never... He never... You know, he had, was a family man. He had his family to take care of. So he never left them to go off to be an actor and I commend him for that because that shows a lot of uh, sacrifice on his part but so so to fill that creative void he acted in community theater locally wherever he was and you know what I doubt if he knows that he's not that good of an actor he was a very humble person too that's why it astonished me that you know here's this very humble man who could act circles around possibly Marlon Brando. I have never seen Marlon Brando on stage, but I've seen Al Pacino, as I said, and others. And I'm sorry, Mr. Pacino, with all due respect, you're a great actor. Man, I'm not putting you down, but this guy is better. I'm sorry, but that, it's just true. Uh, I've been in a, well, I won't, I won't, I have a couple of stories about Al Pacino, and, uh, but I'm not going, it's been too long, I'm not going to get into that. And they're not bad stories. I'm not that Mr. Pacino would be ashamed, uh, you know, embarrassed by or ashamed of. But, um, and he wouldn't know me from Adam. I'm sure he wouldn't remember me. I've been in a room alone with him for five minutes, but I'm sure he doesn't remember that. I remember it, of course, because he was Al Pacino. Uh, he wouldn't remember me. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say. Uh, I just wanted to document to all those young actors out there that just because somebody's famous and been to all these important, renowned acting schools, maybe they might be in the actor studio or whatnot, just because they got all that in their resume doesn't mean diddly squat. Because there's a guy who, who lives or lives near, I don't know if he lived in, but he lives near La Habra, California, who can act circles around him. <laughs> That's all I want to say. And it's the truth. I'm not making this up. It's the truth. Thank you. Sorry for this taking so long. Hope I didn't bore you. Good night.